How's it going my lovely bunch of bakers? Hope you're on a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you that kneading bread dough might be overrated. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. But don't get me wrong, I have nothing against kneading bread dough. I enjoy kneading dough, but I don't always look forward to it. And I'm sure we all have those moments. So in this video, I will show you how to make any bread dough using the no knead method. Folding is the secret method here. Let's get right into it. I'll make three different doughs in this video. A lean 65% hydration white bread, an enriched white bread with eggs, butter and sugar, and a 50-50 white and whole wheat bread that will be cold fermented with a hydration of 80%. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the no knead version of the 65% hydration white dough. I'm going to make another one now, which I'm going to knead for 5 minutes, just so we can compare the results in the end. So as I mentioned earlier, folding is the trick. The way to achieve gluten strength is by stretching and folding the dough over during bulk fermentation. Low hydration breads like this can require only one fold, and to be fair this dough could do without any folds at all. When it comes to high hydration bread, you must increase the number of folds. Anything over 80% could benefit from about 3 folds during bulk fermentation. Different doughs also require different folding methods. Low hydration dough is the easiest one to fold. And here's how you do it. Take the dough out of the bowl, place it on the table, upside down, then stretch out the edge and then fold it over the middle. Keep repeating this step whilst you're going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started and you have a nice tight dough ball. You can then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table and that's the fold done. Note how tight this dough is, remember we did not knead it at all. If you think about it, kneading for a recipe like this is just a waste of time. A single fold that took me a few seconds achieved the same tightness as kneading the dough for 5 minutes. But how is this possible and why does it work? Gluten is created pretty much as soon as flour is mixed with water. There are two proteins contained in the flour which form gluten, called glutenin and gliadin. Glutenin helps develop dough structure and elasticity. Gliadin gives the dough the ability to be stretchy, aka extensibility. It is the balance between these two proteins that allows the dough to be stretchy without tearing and elastic enough to not stretch too far. But why do we have to knead the dough if gluten is created just by mixing flour and water? At first the gluten and gliadin proteins are jumbled up and piled together without any structure. The motion of kneading, whether it be by hand or with a mixer, is generally comprised of repeated folds performed in the same direction over and over. It is this repeated folding motion that reorganizes the proteins, stretching them and rearranging them in straight lines. The folding method works the same as the kneading method, but instead of giving the dough many little folds right after mixing, instead we let the dough rest we let the flour absorb the water and then we give it one or two folds a little bit later. Think of this resting step as autolization, where gluten forms magically by itself. Although it's not magic, we're simply letting the flour absorb the water properly. As you just saw, both breads came out looking identical. But let's just try something more challenging now. A bread with eggs, butter and sugar. All these ingredients hinder gluten formation. But before we move on, let's touch on temperature control. We all know that kneading dough by hand or with a mixer warms it up. That's why normally I would use cooler liquid. The temperature in no knead bread is far easier to control because we are removing one variable. The average temperature between the flour and the liquid will usually be the final dough temperature. I normally just use room temperature liquid for my no knead breads. It is crucial that all the ingredients are mixed well before adding the bulk of the flour. Because we're not kneading the dough, this is the only chance that we get to do it. So when it comes to adding butter, it's best to melt it down. Just make sure it's not boiling hot when you use it. It's important to choose the right tools too. A spatula is not the most effective thing here, but a whisk does a great job at distributing all the ingredients evenly and melting everything down. As you will see in a minute, this dough will be a lot stickier than the other two I just made. But still, I will only give it one fold during bulk fermentation, and after that, we'll go straight to final shaping. A dough like this could also be made without any folds at all, but degassing and folding is generally advisable for any kind of dough that you're making. If anything, it helps distribute the temperature evenly throughout the dough. As the dough is sitting in your kitchen counter, its surface may warm up or cool down a bit, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. Folding the dough over itself can move those warmer and cooler areas in the middle of the dough, and that equalizes the temperature, which will ensure an even fermentation. This is especially important for larger masses of dough. Ok, take note of how this dough looks. It's so much smoother, it does not look sticky at all, and it isn't sticky. Remember, it contains eggs, butter and sugar, and all I did was fold it once. To be fair, I was quite surprised at these results. 
Kneading a dough like this against the table can be a nightmare. It is messy, it is sticky, it can take a longer time. And it's especially bad if your kitchen is hot, because the dough can overheat. The folding method removes all that grief. Now it's worth noting that pre-shaping and final shaping also counted as folds. Every time we reshape the dough or manipulate it in some way, we are essentially folding it and making it tighter. But there are some recipes which don't require kneading, folding, pre-shaping or final shaping. You can find one video on the channel which I showed how to make a bread by just mixing the dough, popping it in the tin, letting it rise and then baking it. And it makes an awesome bread. And that is saying a lot considering that it requires no effort at all. But as I said earlier, I like kneading bread though. I have nothing against it. For me personally, the no knead method will be most useful when I'm making my comparison videos. Because kneading 3 or 4 batches of dough in a row and trying to get them to the same consistency and same temperature can be a nightmare. This method will make my life much easier and the results more consistent. Ok, 3 loaves down, 2 more to go. This is the 80% hydration cold fermented 50-50 white and whole wheat bread. The dough like this is very loose and sticky at first. So oftentimes before kneading it, usually what I would do is let it sit for around 10 minutes. This helps the flour absorb the water a little bit and it makes the kneading process easier. A loose and sticky dough like this requires the slap and fall kneading method. This took me around 10 minutes to fully mix. And it looks nice and smooth and nice and strong. But let's move this to one side and make the no knead version. We'll just mix our water, salt and yeast, let everything dissolve, add the flour, mix until there's no dry flour left and that's it done. This dough will require a few more folds than the previous ones. You can see how loose, rough and sticky it is. It has no strength to it. When I pull it, it tears apart very easily. Unlike the other doughs, these ones will be cold fermented. So I'll pop them in the fridge in a minute and I'll pull the no knead one out once in a while to give it a fold. This is the method I would normally use for cold bulk fermentation. When it comes to folding such a sticky dough, sometimes it's better to use some water instead of a dusting of flour. As I mentioned earlier, there are various folding methods, it depends on the dough. This is what you would call a bowl fold, but there's also lamination and coil folding. You'll find all the details about those in the Steps of Baking playlist. And you can find out all the details about cold bulk fermentation in the Principles of Baking playlist, along with many other interesting videos. Ok, so we did one fold, we popped it back into the fridge, now we're doing the second fold. And here's an example of coil folding. If your dough is loose, stretchy and heavy enough, you can fold it by lifting it up and rolling it underneath itself, coiling it up. Repeat that step on each side until the dough is nice and tight. Ok, we'll give this dough one more fold, then we chill it down and then we'll bring both the doughs out the fridge and compare them. It has been about an hour since I mixed them both. And because I'm giving the no-knead bread another fold, I decided to fold the kneaded dough as well. Just so that we can see if there's any difference between them. And they're almost identical. The no need one is unsurprisingly slightly softer and slightly stickier, but not by much at all. Ok, these both can go into the fridge now for the long cold bulk fermentation. These rascals try to escape their balls at night. I had to punch them down and put them back inside. That's why they don't look so smooth. But there's nothing wrong with them. They are well fermented and we'll make some nice bread out of them. Ok, now is a good chance to compare the texture again. And now I can say they are pretty much identical. If anything, the no need one felt slightly tighter for some reason. Clearly folds have done the job here as well. So I guess you may ask now, how do I convert my recipes to a no need method? And there's not much science to it, you just have to try it. Couple of important things to consider. First, temperature control. Because there's only two variables, you just have to calculate the average temperature between the flour and the liquid to get to the final dough temperature. Second is the ingredients that you use. You must mix your ingredients well before you add the bulk of the flour. Right at the beginning of the mix is your only chance to do it properly. Make sure you dissolve your salt, dissolve your sugar and hydrate the yeast properly. Consider the flour that you're using. If it's quite weak, you might need to add an extra fold. If it's strong and makes for a tight dough, you might need fewer folds. And that is where hydration comes in as well. Low hydration dough can be made with as little as one or even no folds at all. Higher hydration dough may require a few folds. The good thing about converting your own recipes is that you already know what the dough should feel like, so it will be easier to gauge how many folds you need. And that's about it. I challenge you to try this out on your next bake. Take the recipe that you are planning to make and convert it from kneading to folding. And then share your experience in the comments, let me know how it went. I doubt that there are many recipes that can't be made using the no knead method. Given enough folds, any dough can be built up to be strong enough. As is clearly evident in this video, we made 3 recipes and they all work perfectly fine. 
and they all have different characteristics. I guess something like brioche would be more challenging because of all the eggs and butter in it, but I'm sure that even that could be adapted and made to work. On my quest to simplifying and demystifying bread making, sometimes I come across some surprising results. And this was really quite surprising to me. Of course I've made videos using the no knead method, and I always speak about folding how important it is. But I don't think it ever clicked. Only when I was done filming this video, and only when I was holding these breads in my hands, is when I realized that kneading might just be overrated, and it might be quite unnecessary in a lot of cases, at least for the home baker. Because luckily for us, we're only working with small amounts of dough. So what are your thoughts on this method? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.